piece of papers first, go back to your seats, arrange your chairs properly. Alright, settle down now and let us pray. Dear Lord, we offer this day to you. Give light to our mind to learn lessons at all times. Help us to be obedient, truthful, and loving to all. Amen. What a beautiful morning it is! How are you today? No one is sick? Alright, so much for that. Okay, does everyone already filled out the Google form for all attendance? Okay, very good. Oh, since no one is absent, let's give three claps for ourselves. One, two, three. Alright, but before we discuss our discussion, let's have first recall our guidelines when we are having our lessons. What are those five guidelines, class, again? First, be prepared. Second, be positive or be happy. And third, be participative. Fourth, be respectful to your classmates and to your teachers. And lastly, we have be Productive. All right. Do you understand class? Okay. Excellent. Now, before we begin to our new lessons, let's have first a recap to our previous discussion. So last meeting, we've discussed about the presentation and analysis of data. So in analyzing and presenting data class, what we are going to use? Yes, Isa? Okay. Very good. We are going to use a graph. And how many types of graph do we have? Yes, Gilda? Five. Very good. And what are those five? Give me one, Salasti. A line graph. Very good. Another one, Pearly. A histogram. Very good. Another one? Yes, Joy? A line graph, a bar graph, very good. Another one, yes, DB, a pie graph, very good. And the last one is a bar graph, all right, very good. Now, I can see that you really learned something from our previous topics, and I think you're now ready for our new lessons. But before that, let's have first a short game. Do you want to play a game class? All right. So, do you, are you familiar with the game Four Picks One Word? Okay, of course, in this game, I am going to present four pictures and you will going to guess what the pictures tell. And if you know the answer, kindly raise your right hand and do not answer in chorus. Do you understand, class? Okay, very good. So for the first picture we have... Yes, Vera? Assam, very good. And the second picture we have... Yes, Joshua? Average, very good. And the third picture is, yes, Pearly. Okay, it's a middle. And for the last picture we have, oh, everybody is raising their hand. It seems that all of you know the answer. What's the answer, class? Frequent. Okay, very good, class. Now, in connection to our previous game, our topic for today is about the measures of central tendency. And our learning outcome for this day is to define mean, median, and mode. Second is to be able to compute the mean, median, and mode. And the third one is to show appreciation to the value of mean, median, and mode in real life. Now, what is measures of central tendency? Everybody please read. Measures of central tendency is a summary of measures that attempts to describe the whole set of data with a single value that represents the middle or center of its distribution. In short, it is a measure that tells where the middle or center of the data set is located. And there are three types of measures of central tendency. Those are the mean, median, and the mode. Now, let's first tackle the mean. Everybody please read. Mean is commonly used measures of central tendency, and it is also used to describe the whole set of data where the measures cluster or concentrate at a point. It is found by adding all the values of data and dividing it by the total number of values of x. So, when we speak up the average, we always refer it to mean. And we have here the formula. We have here x bar is equal to summation of x divided by n, where the summation of x represents the sum of all the data and n represents the total number of the value of x. Do you understand, class? All right, excellent. Now, we have here an example. Everybody please read class. The following scores of 11 students in their first quarter exam in Mathematics 7 are 88, 81, 75, 95, 98, 86, 72, 80, 90, and 92. Let's find the mean. So, from the given formula, let us now try to analyze and substitute the given values to the given formula. Again, what is the formula in finding the mean? Okay, very good. We have your x bar is equal to summation of x over n. And now, let's try to substitute the given values to the given formula. So, we have here, x bar is equal to 88 plus 81 plus 75 plus 95 plus 88 plus 86 plus 72 plus 80 plus 90 plus 92 over 11, which is the total number of the value of x. So, everybody, please calculate. Alright, we have 1,081 over 11. 
is equal to very good it is 94 hence most of the student scores are opposed to 94 now let's have another example who wants to volunteer i will give additional points yes i said come to the board here is the problem the ages of the contestants of the statistic quiz b are the following 18 17 18 19 and 18 find their average okay plus you can also solve all right i is done let's check your answer now we have here the formula x bar is equal to summation of x over n and we have the given 18 plus 17 plus 18 plus 19 plus 18 is equal to 90 very good divided by the total number of x which is 5 very good 90 divided by 5 is equal to 810 all right very good so meaning to say the students age are close to 810 all right let's give three class for isa one two three all right do you have any question class okay very good so since no more questions let's proceed to another types of measures of central tendency to be discussed by mr anas thank you mr speed now the second measure of central tendency is the median so what is the median okay everybody please read very good. The median is denoted by the big letter M and small letter D, and it is the method value of the sample when the data are arranged in ascending or descending order. Always remember, class, that the median will either be specific value or will fail between two values. So, do you understand, class? Okay, very good. And we have here two formulas in finding the median for add and for even. So, for add, we have median is equal to x sub n over 2 plus 1, while for the even, we have x sub n over 2 plus x sub n over 2 plus 1 over 2. Now, we have here an example. Everybody, please read. So, the following scores of 11 students in their first quarter exam in Mathematics 7 are 88, 81, 75, 95, 98, 88, 86, 72, 80, 90, and 92. Now, always remember that before we find the median, let's arrange first the given value in ascending or descending order then find the middle value. Okay, let's now arrange the given value in ascending order. So we have 72, 75, 80, 81, 86, 88, 88, 90, 92, 95, and 98. Since the given value are add, let's use the formula for add. So we have median is equal to x sub n over 2 plus 1. Then let's now substitute the given value. So we have median is equal to x sub n over 2 plus 1 is equal to 11 plus 1 over n. And that is equal to 12 over 2. And that is equals to 6. So thus, our middle score falls into the 6th place in the RA and that is 88. Now, to interpret the results, half of the students got 88 points and below, while the other half got 88 points and above. Now, we have here another example. So, everybody please read. Abigail's squeezes for the second quarter are 8, 7, 6, 10, 9, 9, 5, 6, 10, and 7. So, find the median. So, what, what is the first rule again in finding the median? Okay, very good. Arrange the data set in ascending order. So, Isa, can they arrange the data set in ascending order? Okay, very good. It is 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, and 10. Now, what you have observed from the given data? Alright, it is given. So, what is the formula that we are going to use? Okay, very good. It is median is equal to x sub n over 2 plus x sub n over 2 plus 1 over 2. Then, let's now substitute the value. So, median is equal to x sub 10 over 2 plus x sub 10 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So, that is equal to x sub 5 plus x sub 6 over 2. And that is equals to 7 plus 8 over 2 and 15, equals to 15 over 2 and that is equals to and the median is 7.5 so therefore half of abigail scores are 7.5 below and while the other half of abigail scores is 7.5 and above so all right do you understand this very good now let's proceed to another types of measures of central tendency and that is the mode so everybody please read very good it is the measure of the value which occurs most frequently in a set of data it is also the value with the greatest frequency so always remember that the data can have more than one mode or none at all so to find the mode of the set of data we have to consider the following first select the measures that appears most often in the set second if two or more measures appears the same number of times then each of those values are the mode and the last is if every measure appears the same number then the, date, the set of data has no mode the following are the types of mode number one no mode a data having equal frequency of distribution. Number two, unimodal. A score distribution that consists of one mode. And the next is bimodal. A score distribution that consists of two modes. And the fourth one is trimodal. A score distribution that consists of three modes. And lastly, a multimodal. It is a score distribution that consists of more than three modes. Again, what are the types of modes we have? So we have no mode, unimodal, bimodal, trimodal and multimodal. Very good. Okay, now let's have an example. Find the mode of the following data. So we have here the data. 
92. Again, what we're gonna do first? Very good. We have to arrange the data in ascending order. So we have here the data. 72, 75, 80, 81, um, 86, 88, 88, 90, 92, 95, and 98. Now, who can give me the numbers which, which occurs most frequently? Yes, Danica? Very good. It is 88. And what type of mode it is? Yes, Gulden? Very good. It is a unit model. Now, we have here the second example. Who wants to answer? Yes, Vera? The ages of turbulent only selected. Customer of cafeteria is listed below. We have 31, 19, 30, 21, 29. 21, 28, 23, 26, 23, 24, and 24. Now, Vera, write it in an ascending order. Okay, very good. It is 19, 21, 21, 23, 23, 24, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30, and 31. And what number appear most frequently, Vera? Okay, very good. It is 21, 23, and 24. Thank you, Vera. You may not take your seat. So, class, what mode do we call this? Very good. It is a trimodal tri because it consists of three modes. So, is everything clear, class? No more questions or any clarifications? Okay, very good. Now, may I call Miss Crispy to give you an instruction for our activity today? Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Anas. Now, before we proceed to our work activity, let's have first a recap. So, what are the types of measures of central tendency again, class? Very good. It is the mean, median, and the mode. And what are the formula in finding the mean? Yes, Celeste. Very good. We have x bar is equal to summation of x over n. And what are the rules in finding the median and the mode? Yes, Gelda. Okay, very good. We have to arrange the data in ascending or descending order. And what are the five types of mode? Give me one, Debbie. Very good. It is no mode. Another one, Apple. Okay, very good. Ioni modal. Another one, Joshua. Very good, it is bimodal. Another one, Jose? Yes, a trimodal, very good. And the last one we have, very good, we have a multimodal. Now, I can see that you're now ready for our activity. Now, I will group you into two. This is group one, and this is group two. And here is the direction. Perform the assigned task, collect the data from your group mates, and ask questions, then record it. Do this in five minutes. Now, you can go to our Google Classroom. The instructions per groups are already there. And remember that I will be the one choosing your reporter, so please cooperate, everyone. All right, time's up, everyone. Can you paste your answers on the board? And I will call one representative each group to present your answer. Okay, for group one, Lovely, you explain your answers. All right, thank you, Miss Lovely. So, for the group one, they are assigned to collect the true sizes of their group mates. And we have here the data. And the mean is equal to 38.8, the median is equal to 38, and the mode is equal to 38, and it is a unique modal. Alright, very good, group 1. Now, for the group 2, kindly explain your answer, Jayan. Alright, thank you, Jayan. So, for the group 2, they are assigned to collect the weights of their group mates. So, here are the data. And the mean is equal to 42.9, the median is equal to 43, and the mode are 43 and 44, and that is a bimodal. It is bimodal because 43 and 44 appears twice, and it is the most frequently appears from the given data set. Very good, group 2. Right, very good, group 1 and group 2. You will receive 20 points each group. Now, please go back to your proper seats and arrange your chairs properly. We are going to have an individual activity. Alright, settle down now, class. You may go to our Google Classroom. And remember, for those who haven't an internet connection, you can connect my hotspot. The password is 12345678. Okay, I will give you 15 minutes to finish your activity. Alright, thanks up class. Okay, later you will see your scores for our quiz once I'm done checking it. So for now, here is your assignment. In your own words, explain the difference between the types of measures of central tendency. So later I will post this to our Google Classroom and you can attach your answers there. It can be printed or written. Okay, no more questions, class? Do you really understand our discussions? Okay, very good. Since no more questions, I guess that's all for today, class. Thank you and goodbye.